for peace, stability, and Benue crisis, we've been vindicated. State PDP says, as APC, Alia Few, Rojizong. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. Plato killings. Tinumbu urges governors to ensure peace and stability. President Bola Tinumbu says the federal and subnational governments of Nigeria have the mutual responsibility of ensuring the country's peace and stability. Speaking during a meeting with the Nigeria Governors Forum NGF at his residence in Lagos, on Tuesday, the president reiterated his condemnation of the latest killings in Plato State. Addressing the governors, the president issued a stern directive to security agencies to halt the carnage in Plato State and intensify the pursuit of those responsible for the recent tragic events in Bokos and Brakinla, the local government areas. Condoling with the victims, President Inumbu emphasized the sanctity, the sanctity of human life and called for a paradigm shift among those with contrary beliefs. Take a listen. My is going to the we have to stop the time. We have to take care of our people. Make life more simple. And educate our people to change your mindset in the circumstances that we have had. Uh, Nigeria belongs to all of us. And we have to take care of it. The Excellency, the Governor of Rivers, and, you know, I read your statement, and she thank you very much for that. Signalship uh, brokers and reliance on peace. It's only with peace that we can govern, and governments have started to state can chairman reverend father polycarp luno and a security expert Dennis amakri gentlemen welcome to post politics thank you for having me uh, mm -hmm. i want to commiserate once again with the people of plateau state the unfortunate incident on the plateau is indeed an indictment of all of us because it does seem like we are acting like lower animals. I wonder why lives of our people will be regularly cut short and we, with all the expertise at our disposal and with all the resources at our disposal, 
seem to be where we are now. Uh, Reverend Father, uh, what would be your portraiture of the event thus far on the, on the plateau? Well, um, thank you for having me and uh, the opportunity given okay. to be able to say a few words about what has happened in Plateau. And actually, it happened on the 24th, that's the Christmas Eve, where about 25 villages were ransacked simultaneously. And a lot of killings were made, houses were burned, properties were vandalized, etc. And uh, initially, we were just estimating the number of people that have, that have died. But we have almost, who we were there today, with the Vice President, uh, Senator Kashim Shitima, uh, with the Chief Security Officers of the country that were there, uh, the Chief of Defense Staff, the Chief of uh, the Defense Intelligence, and the rest were there. And we were told that 148 people died, and a number of people we have been uh, hospitalized because of different uh, well, sickness, different uh, uh, injuries and the rest of them. It is so sad, so barbaric, it was coinous, and it's, it, is, it, is, it is terrible. It's a terrible sight to see. And at times there are videos that are trading now that you could hear the full animal talking, and you could hear, you could see our women and children, the aged women that cannot run for their daily life, were killed. And it was a sad day, sad day in the sense that even the festival that Christians have been celebrate, celebrating the birth and the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, while the day that is meant for celebration, it has turned out to be a day that will that, that bring sadness, not to the people of that community alone, but the entire state and, in fact, the country at large. It is, it is quite, quite unfortunate that this is happening and that um, if we can look at it critically, Plateau has been suffering for the past, uh, since 2001, and it has not come to, it has not come, you have not find a solution to it. Nobody has been brought to book and nobody has been um, sentenced for one reason or the other in the court of law. And as I'm talking to you today, same thing is happening, same system of killing, you don't mind whether there are kids or children, anybody that is a human being that has been found, the man will lose, will lose his life. And uh, when they talk about it, you will talk about, it's not the issue of ethnicity, they will talk about farmer, a farmer, a harder crisis. And at times, retaliation will come in, maybe after a month, if a car is being attacked or a human being is being attacked, the president will come after some months or oh, some weeks where you never you thought everything has come to say after pleading people should live in peace but you discover that they don't accept it at all so it's okay. so sad and uh we don't pray for such to happen again in the state and i think the the chief security officer and um, the chief of defense staff and um uh, the security advisor to the to the president Bola Metinubu, and the reason we're there, and they made pledge that they are going to bring the perpetrator to book. And I pray it will come to pass because people are so tired. It's been, it does, if you look at the, it, in fact, that's the inhumanity to mankind. It's terrible. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll come back to you. We'll come back to you, uh, Reverend Father. Uh, Mr. Macri. Hello, Mr. Macri. I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you. We cannot have experts, people with the kind of rich experiences, unsung experiences, such as you. And yet, we are like functioning as though we are in Southern Sudan. What are we doing wrongly, especially regarding not engaging those of you whose experience and whose knowledge can help to bring about this malady, what are we doing wrongly? Uh, well, I think uh, one thing is that the security agencies are doing the best they could 
Uh, for those of us who are retired, I believe strongly that uh, inside the services, they still have very, very uh, smart officers and men who have been handling this for a very long time. But you see, the problem we have is what many people don't want to address. And that is, this is an avoidable problem. Avoidable. Like uh, the Reverend have said, it has been festering uh, since 2001. And um, of course, every year, and it is always around the Christmas time, intelligence reports have been given either to the military and police around this time for this particular situation, even the particular this, this very attack, there was intelligence report that was given about people to be very, very careful. But you see, one thing is this, the security agencies or even the military cannot address this particular issue or respond immediately to take care of the situation when they are not equipped enough to do it. You know, talking about equipment, there are so many different ways, so many different equipment, special weapons and tactics that is supposed to be in the marketplace. We're not buying it for the police. And remember, this is not even a military issue. This is a police matter. And we expect that the police should be equipped properly to deal with it. But where are they? You know, how many policemen do you have in Plateau State? There are three, more than, well, just a little bit above 300,000 policemen in Nigeria, out of 200 and something million Nigerians. Even the recommended United Nations uh, figures uh, is less than what we have here. So these are the issues. If we don't do that and get the policemen to every nooks and crannies, you know, it will continue. Even, um, you know, we'll have a uh, uh, chief of naval staff, uh, pres vice president, uh, they will all come, national security advisor, they will make statements, it will not happen again. The president has already asked them that make sure this does not happen again. But for the others that have happened before, how many arrests have we got? How many prosecutions have we got? How many of these bandits that are foreigners have we sent out of the country? These are the issues. Uh, thank you very so much. So we, we, we don't couch it. I, I, come, back, I come back to you. Um, Reverend Father, uh, uh, the security expert also seems to be as um, as disillusioned as you. Uh, he short of saying that the political class would naturally mouth the platitudes that they often mouth at about uh, this time. Uh, there may not be any dramatic changes. Are we going to continue like this as though as though the people on the plateau are living in southern Sudan where the Janjaweeds can, <laughs> the Janjaweeds can just, uh, 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 you know, it's sad, but it's, it, it, it's funny, but very sad. It uh, is. Uh, 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 that's why I say it has been, it has been like an age, let me say, it has been like an age long problem we've been having, and um, particularly in Bokos and Barking Lady Axis. And like today, yesterday, I had to go on press to condemn the issue. But how long will I stand to be condemning the issue uh, verbally? What we want is action. What can be done? This is like the security expert said, these are things that is, it, it turns out to be rhetoric. People don't talk about it, and that's the end. Then it, it comes down tomorrow, it comes on again. Nothing can be done, nobody's been arrested, you know. And you see, the political class can do nothing. The security men, particularly the military men, until they give them an order before they carry on. And like, uh, why did somebody came and told me when we were leaving Bokos today? He said, Please, father, 
If you can help, we don't need the military men. We want the, the what do you call it, the, these other policemen. Um, uh, mobile, they said they did a mobile, uh, mobile police, preferably. Because, like, the, 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 the security are incapacitated. Like, the way they did this one, 25 villages simultaneously at once. So why would they get the security uh, security men to take over the whole place? It can be very difficult. They were overwhelmed. They can do nothing. And as, as I'm talking to you, when we were in Bogos around around 1, 1 p.m. today, while the, the vice president was talking, when the chairman of the local government came to welcome the vice president, he told them the first statement he made was that as he's talking, there are two villages that are on fire. Today? I, mean, I don't know what they said. I, are, are, you, are you saying today still? Yes. As when we were there today, around 1, 1 p.m., when the vice president came with all the security men, when the chairman of the local government was addressing the, the crowd, he said, as I'm talking to you now, there are two villages. One, I'm sure, the other one is tense. There are other killings that are going on now. So we asked ourselves, I didn't, but at this particular moment, I didn't know what, what the action they took. I'm not a security expert. But the people now, when they, when they say that they expect, you see a, a rapid response where the security men will go and go and rescue these people. But we, we, I just don't understand. It's like, uh, I don't, I, you know, it got to a point I said, would it be nice for me to say, why can't they legalize arms and ammunition to individuals so that you can defend yourself? Since the situation, the security uh, men cannot uh, hold let, let, me, let me go to the security expert and uh, let's uh, get some of the ideas ideas from, from him. Um, Dr. Amakri, I almost, every time I see you, there's a tendency for me to want to call you doctor. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know why I always want to call you a doctor, you know, PhD holder in security, but I know. Not yet. Not yet. You know, yeah. Okay, it, it will soon come. Um, it, it is saddening, very saddening because uh, we, w without wanting to uh, be sensational and without wanting to be very pedestrian in the way we couch it, the perpetrators can easily be designed and the victims also can easily be designed. And like you rightly said earlier on, to which we also have uh, journalistic uh, reports about, that they had even written, that they had earlier written to threaten that they were going to strike at about this time. Now, with all these pieces of intelligence, with all these pieces of, uh, one is wondering, okay, if the organized security agencies cannot help our people, and the law is barring our people from carrying arms, what can experts like you do to help enlighten our people to be able to, to read the telltale signs and easily protect themselves? Thank you very much for that question. Thank you, sir. Um, you see, it is not a situation where we arm everybody. I mean, everybody does not solve the problem because, you know, in, in other countries, like even in the United States here, where everybody, I can walk out of this house, go down to the shop and buy a gun for myself. You know, it does not help because you find out that it's a big major problem for the country here whereby people who have guns, they just want to sometimes try it. They go into a shopping mall and start shooting everybody. Or they go into a school and start shooting people. We don't want to go into that. And that's why we... Those who are trained to use it. Like the police. The police have to be well trained. And then, of course, with weapons, they could be on standby and respond. Because these are the important factors. 
well-trained, well-armed and equipped, and then, of course, very good response. Response within about 15 minutes is okay, acceptable internationally. But uh, here, when something happened, like they said, it happened around uh, Christmas Eve, and they didn't see any security agent until the next day, around 7 a.m. You know, the military spokesman said it was about 45 minutes. But all the same, 45 minutes is not good enough. It's not good enough. You know, when you are responding to where lives and property are being lost, it's not good enough. So we want a situation where we train the police properly. You say they want uh, mopoles. Mopoles are supposed to be crowd control uh, uh, policemen. But right now, what are they doing? They are following uh, uh, rich people who are paying them privately. And then, of course, remember, when this present IG came, he said that they are going to withdraw all of them, if you remember very well. You're right. Two weeks after that, everybody forgot about it, and they are still where they are. Because the Nigerian big man cannot step out of his house without Mopol. I don't know what he's scared about. You know, but it is very, very important that we train our policemen to take care of the criminal environment that we live in, and then everybody can have a breath of fresh air. Uh, 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 Mr. Macri, please, please, I, I, and I need your help still. I am now concerned about, we know that it does not help to, to allow everybody to carry to carry firearms, we know. But having said that, I am thinking if you were to be constrained to live in Bokos or Barikladi, what are the courses I can take from, from experts like you? I, I say I'm a pastor of a church or I'm a community leader to at least sensitize my people and say, you know what, when you see things like this, when you see things like this, or when things are happening like this, just find a way of quickly letting people know, and you see, this is how, this is how you can hide to save yourself from, and this is what you can, I, I, I'm thinking aloud now, because I, I, I'm so frustrated, I don't know, but to ask an expert like you, sir. Uh, Dr. Macri, no, sorry, uh, Mr. Macri. Yeah, the solutions are very uh, normal, common, place solutions. Security awareness is key to anything. You know, no matter how sophisticated the situation is, if people are security aware, oh, they are yeah. aware about security, they are aware about their situation, what we call situational awareness, then they can protect themselves one way or the other. Because when they know, like you said now, somebody wrote a letter to the community telling them that they are coming. Now, that information is very, very important. That information can be sent to the security agencies. Now, the National Security Advisor is there. He has visited. If such information comes to him, what happens? There is a fusion center at the National Security Advisor's office that is supposed to process that kind of information. And when you are processing that kind of information, what do you do? That's why we are saying that the police should be well trained. How many attack helicopters do we have in the police? Hmm. Because we know that Bokos and Barking Ladi are far flung areas, far away. Even right. if you are leaving Joss to Bokos, it will take you some time. The terrain is very bad, and there are no major roads that you can follow. So, what stops us from sending two helicopter gun boats, gunships, with well-trained snipers inside to go down to that place within 10 minutes of that thing happening? You know, this is what I'm talking about. Thank you very much, sir. I, I always, uh, always a pleasure to listen to you or engage with you. Um, um, Reverend Father, uh, we have to come to you for for a wrap-up of this. Reverend Father, uh, 
what would you like to tell um, families, friends of the victims on the one hand, uh, the people on the plateau on the other hand, and many Nigerians, indeed, many, I read, uh, ironically, the first place I read about this uh, day before yesterday was in the Economics magazine. The, indeed, the people of the world who are now who are now referring to Nigeria as though they are referring to Somalia, Southern Sudan, or indeed the southern region of Sudan where, where one particular tribe is killing mercilessly another tribe. What would you, how would you want to sign off from, you know, from this program, sir? Uh, well, I, first of all, I would like to call on the entire world to continue to pray for Plato. We need prayers. And then uh, the other aspect that I would like to talk about is uh, uh, that those who have lost their lives and property, that they should just uh, bear in the mind that we, they are not alone, we are with them, and that we are, those that have lost their life, we pray that God will grant them eternal rest. And those that are injured, that are still in the hospital, uh, lucky enough, the governor was on his way to go to the hospital to see them. He's going to find a way of... Um, Helping them out by paying their bills, and then uh, uh, console the family uh, that have lost their lives. Like now, uh, I was talking about 25 villages that have been ransacked, and uh, many were killed, uh, houses were vandalized, burned, and burned, and the rest of them. We would like to call on uh, meaningful and meaningful Nigerians, if they can, if they if they have the capacity to help, they should try help. And most of the angels, they can look out for food. I know, unfortunately, that even they harvested food, they were burned out. I don't know how they're going to survive. Even though the demand is available. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have to go now, sir. We have to go. We, we really have to go. Sorry about that, sir. T time. All right. Uh, but I just hope and pray that uh, President Bola Metinumbu will not join the team of uh, public officials who will just trade platitudes on occasion, uh, you know, on certain occasions like this. We hope that they will follow their words and make sure that this does not repeat itself. It does not portray us as very serious-minded people, indeed. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for much. having me. We'll go on a short break, and when we're back, the second segment of the show will unfold.